Hello, geometry students, Mr. Zazik back and better than ever here in Unit 5, Lesson 2. We're going to be looking at uh, perpendicular and angle bisectors um, today and uh, some relationships within triangles of, of those things. And uh, so we want to figure out what relationships we can determine about those. That's kind of the overarching question we want to answer. So a point is equidistant from two objects if it is the same distance from each object. So this says find all the points, find all points equidistant from points A and points B. Okay, now if I want to find the points that are all the same distance from A, one of the ways I can do that is by drawing a circle. So I draw this circle here around A. Well, if I come over to B and I find all of the points that are equidistant from B, I draw a circle as well. And <clears throat> what I do is I find that the intersection of those points are right here. And what does this actually look like if we Remember from earlier, the construction that we've done is we've just created the perpendicular bisector of that segment AB. So the points that are equidistant from A and from B all fall on this line right here in the middle, the perpendicular bisector. There's a... Um, you know, kind of in-class thing that I've done with this before where, you know, take some M&Ms and place them equidistant from A and B, and we'd find they'd have to be along this yellow line, along the perpendicular bisector. So that is what the perpendicular bisector theorem says, and let's, uh, I'm going to read it to you. If a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of that segment. So wherever this um, segment moves, wherever P moves in this example, it's always going to be the same distance from A and from B. So uh, what you see right here, this is kind of the key relationship. So PA is equal to PB or congruent to PB, and it doesn't matter where that point moves up or down on that segment, that is going to be um, the case. So we can flip that um, around, the converse. Converse means that you kind of switch the, the two parts of it. If a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then it is on the perpendicular bisector of that segment. So um, here, if PA is equal to PB or congruent to PB, then we know that you've got a perpendicular bisector. And again, the bisector means that M here is going to be, this is the midpoint of that segment there. Okay, so we're setting things equal. We're forming right angles. We're going to do some application here in just a minute, but we have another theorem to explore. And this says, find all the points equidistant from BA and BC. Well, this one happens to be a construction. The construction that we know is the angle bisector. So if we come down here and um, kind of turn that up. So there's our angle bisector construction. And uh, if we connect that segment out, What's going to happen here is every point along the angle bisector is going to be the same distance from both sides of the angle. So it's, it's equidistant um, from it. Now, what comes into play here is this next little piece is helpful to keep in mind is that the distance from a point to a line the length uh, is the length of the perpendicular segment from the point um, to the line. So if I'm looking at these two lines, it's always going to be perpendicular. So 
if I were to take that back up here on our construction, how do I find the distance from this um, angle bisector to a side? Well, we find the distance by drawing a perpendicular line. We find the distance down here by drawing a perpendicular line. So if you're measuring distance, it needs to be perpendicular. That's the key point um, in here. So let's just kind of summarize that. So if we measure distance, it must be um, perpendicular to the line. All right, so the angle, that leads us to the angle bisector theorem. It says if a point is on the bisector of an angle, then the point is equidistant from the sides of the angle. So see what we have here. We've got this angle bisector. So therefore, this conclusion that we reach down here, SP equals SR. So those two things are equal to each other you know if that was if you want to put some numbers in there like let's say one's five the other is five okay so then just like we did with a perpendicular bisector if we flip this one around if a point in the interior of an angle is equidistant from the sides of the angle that's what we have going on here we have if a point the point in this instance is s okay is in the interior of an angle. So the interior part of the angle is all this space inside of it here, okay? So if that point S is there, okay, and um, it's the same distance, so PS or SP and SR are the same, then we know that, so here's the condition, interior of an angle equidistant from the sides of angle, then the point is on the angle bisector. So we know here that QS bisects angle PQR, all right? If we were going to summarize all of these things, we would just say it's always equal, all right? But we're going to, I'm going to walk you through the thought process um, on, on these two things here, okay? So what is the length of AB? All right, so the markings in this diagram indicate that um, BD is the perpendicular bisector of AC. Okay, so that's what's going on here. We see the right angle and we see the tick marks, that means that, okay? So the theorem says, therefore, now here's what we now know. Because that is what we know, we know that these points, any point on there is gonna be equidistant. So point B is gonna be the same distance from A as it is from C. So we know that AB is gonna equal uh, CB. So therefore, um, 4x is going to equal 6x minus 10. So depending on how you want to do this, if we subtract 6x, we'd get negative 2x equals negative 10. And when we divide by 2, we get x equals 5. And then ab equals 4 times 5. So ab equals 20. Okay? That's the thought process using this new theorem that we have. Number two, what is the length of QR? So again, we want to see that here, that QS is the perpendicular bisector of PR. How do we see that? We see that from the tick marks, from the angle marking that gives us perpendicular. Those two tick marks tell it's, us it's the bisector. So therefore, we know that PQ 
is going to equal QR. All right, that's our that's our thought process um, with those theorems. So 3n minus 1 equals 5n minus 7. Okay, so whoops, add 7, subtract 3n. So that would be 6 equals 2n. So n is 3, and now we're trying to find qr. So qr is, would be 5 times 3 minus 7, which would be 8. 15 minus 7 would be 8. Okay. So those are two questions, perpendicular bisector. All right, now the next question here, what is the length of Rm? Okay, so here's, the, here's kind of the thought process for this one. The tick marks indicate that um, Rn bisects angle MNP. Okay, so that's what we're seeing here. So angle bisector. So therefore, we know that any point along this line is going to be equidistant from each side. So therefore, MR is going to equal RP. So we have 7x equals 2x plus 25. So we subtract 2x. We get 5x equals 25, divide by 5, x is 5, and we're trying to find Rm. Rm is 7 times 5, which would be 35. Okay, so again, there's the thought process. Tick marks tell us it's the angle bisector. Angle bisector means point R has to be the same distance from both sides, and because we see those right angles here and here, that's telling us that that's the same distance here, okay? Number four, what is the length of XB, okay? So, again, we want to recognize that CF, okay, bisects angle BCD, all right? That's the key. Recognize CF bisects angle BCD. Therefore, BF equals FD. So 6x plus 3 equals 4x plus 9. So we subtract 3, subtract 4x. We get uh, 2x equals 6, x equals 3. All right, and then we're going to try to find FB, which is 6 times x plus 3. But we know that x is 3, so... Uh, 18 plus 3 would be 21, all right? So those are the two things that we have going on here, all right? So we've got, I think, one, one more question with a couple parts. So a park director wants to build a t-shirt stand equipped equidistant from the Roland Coaster and the Spaceship Chute. What are the possible locations of this stand Explain. Okay, so a park director wants to build a t-shirt stand equidistant from the rolling coaster and the spaceship chute. So the rolling coaster is essentially on this thing a point and the spaceship chute is a point. This is just like the first question that we, we did here. What are the possible locations? So if we were to connect these two things here, then we could perform a construction to find the perpendicular bisector. That's kind of the theme of what our first thing is here. So draw this up. Okay, we go more than halfway. More than halfway. And then we would take our uh, straight edge and let me just connect those here inside the map. Okay, And this is the perpendicular bisector. 
So if we're going to describe that, we would say um, the stand could be located along the perpendicular bisector of the segment connecting the rolling coaster and the spaceship whoops I didn't spell that right the spaceship shoot okay so the stand could be located along those two um, things right there uh, suppose the director wants the t-shirt stand to be equidistant from the paddle boats and the spaceship shoot okay well it's the same thing I mean so paddle boat is just a different a different thing what are the possible locations all right along the perpendicular bisector of the segment that connects them okay um, so if we were going to do that, then can you place the spaceship, the, place the t-shirt stand so it is equidistant from the paddle boats, the spaceship chute, and the rolling coaster? Yeah, it's, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to connect these two. This, this was the last one. Here's the spaceship chute, okay. My little segment drawing tool is not cooperating. Um... So, whoops, I'm going to get my uh, compass over here. So I'm going to put it on the point there. And uh, I'm going to go kind of more than halfway. Let me get a different color on that line. More than halfway here. Okay, flip it over here. That's the same arc, you notice. Okay, more than halfway. So now that um, segment we have will connect here to uh, weird 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 okay my segment tool is being a little funky with me but I think you know where that is so the point would be right there would be along the the, um, the intersection of the two perpendicular bisectors that would be equidistant from all three places. So, um, <clears throat> yes, at the intersection of the two perpendicular bisectors. All right, so perpendicular bisectors, angle bisectors, lots of equal segments okay things being equal so um, really work to get the reasoning right you know when you go to these assignments it could be simple just to set everything equal but work to get your thinking right so you're seeing these things correctly all right and go ahead and fill out that reflection good luck